Hi, I'm Mark Hickler. I've been building stringed instruments as a hobby for almost 30 years. Several years ago, I got interested in solving some of the fundamental problems of banjo making. I wanted to build my own rims from scratch. The normal wood lathes you can buy just don't have the accuracy you need to fit tone rings and other banjo hardware. So I designed a wood lathe from off-the-shelf parts. And that lathe is the subject of this video. Let's take a look at the major components of the lathe. The lathe head is the powerhouse of the lathe. This type of lathe head is very convenient because the motor is integrated into the head and it includes a variable speed control. Several manufacturers make lathes with this type of head. There are two cross slides. The cross slide in front of the lathe is used for cutting the inner diameter and the leading edge of the rim. The cross slide at the side of the head is used for cutting along the side of the rim. All of these components are mounted on a steel base made of welded square steel tube. Next, I'd like to introduce how the cutting tools mount to the cross slide. I use three types of cutting bits, one to cut to the left, one to cut to the right, and a rounded one for smoothing cuts. They simply slide into the tool holder, and the tool holder itself is mounted to the cross slide by means of a T-nut. The T-nut slides into the track of the cross slide, and you simply use bolts to secure it to the cross slide. This is a laminated rim blank, and it's attached to a piece of particle board, which is in turn attached to a six inch face plate. The rim blank is actually glued right to the particle board. Later on, we'll separate the two in the later stages of production. We're going to mount it onto the lathe. Next, we're going to move the to cutting tool right up close to feel where the high spot is. We keep moving it in until it just barely is touching. Back it off just a little bit. Remember I said that the, uh, the cutting tools generally just work in one direction. I turn it in one quarter of a turn, start my cut. Back it off. Go another quarter turn. I'm going to keep repeating this process until I get past the point where the outer skin of the rim blank is completely turned to bare wood. As you can see, it's still got some spots that are not quite turned down. But I'm just going to check the uh, diameter, see where we're at. <clears throat> we're still way away from. We're about uh, 11 and 3 tenths of an inch. So we've got ways to go.
take another measure. We're still a bit over 11 and a tenth of an inch. But now we're getting down close enough where I want to start fitting the tone ring. I can actually extend the cutter out quite a ways. That's the beauty of having this long bed on the cutting tool holder. Tighten that up. Now I'm going to move my cross slide over just to find out where the high point is again. Right there. Back it off. And we can start our cut. The tone ring is going to fit this way, and we're going to set it in about half the height of the tone ring. <clears throat> tone ring is about half an inch high, so we're going to go in a quarter of an inch. One very handy tool is the dial caliper. It has a dial that measures movement within one one thousandth of an inch. It's got a magnetic base and I can move it up against my cross slide, turn on the base, set my dial to zero, and now it can measure the movement of my cross slide. I've already got the cutting tool lined up with my line that I drew. So I can tell when I back it off how far move to move it forward and keep the same depth. And there we have it. Now I'll take a sharp pencil and I'll draw a line to give me a good idea about how deep to go. Now I'm going to start doing eighth turn cuts because I'm getting real close.
That looks beautiful. I'm going to check it with my calipers. Make sure we're under 11. You don't want to go over. Even if you're under by a couple of thousands, it doesn't matter. But if you're over, it causes problems. And if you can see on the dial, we're 5 thou over, maybe 3, 3 or 5. So I'm going to give it one little kiss cut, and that should do it. Take another measure. That is almost perfect. Sanding will take it down a little bit, so we'll definitely be under 11. Looking very nice. The next challenge is we're going to have to uh, deal with the inside because that's definitely not round and it's not parallel to the outer rim because we haven't turned it yet. Perfect. The next step in making our rim is going to be placing the holes for the bracket shoes. In order to do that, we're going to take our tension hoop and we're going to put it on the rim and use the notches for indexing the positions of the bracket shoe holes. In order to make that fit, I'm going to turn down this part of the backing plate enough so that I can wedge this on. <laughs> 